Good morning, I'm Morgan Donner, and today's video has nothing to do with historical sewing. But that's okay, it's at least tangentially related, because I'm going to be doing some experimenting making historical style jewelry from pewter and silicone molds. A friend of mine, Century Sewing, has recently been giving her hand at trying to make historical jewelry based off of paintings in 3D modeling programs. If you're not familiar with 3D modeling, it's really cool stuff. My husband has made some really beautiful pieces that he then sent to a company that prints 3D models in metals, and when they came back they were gorgeous. But the main problem with that is that it tends to be a little bit pricey. You do have the option to print out your stuff in plastic, which is great and way more affordable, but who wants to wear plastic jewelry? So my friend asked me if I can make a mold of one of those plastic 3D prints and then cast pewter into that mold. I've never done anything like that before, but it's a really good idea and I'm excited to give it a try. So here's the plastic positive that she sent me and it's super cute, but I can already see some issues with this print. For example, these little rings here are going to be way too small to try and cast in pewter. But the thickness of the piece itself overall is good. That should cast okay. So it's mainly these rings that we have a little bit of an issue with. So I took one of these plastic prints that she sent me and added a two-part putty called Green Stuff, as you might be able to guess why, uh, and added some to try and make these hoops a little bit thicker. They're not a lot thicker, but they're thick enough now that I think that they will cast a little bit better. I'm, I'm at least giving it a better chance of success, right? Now that I've got my positive that I want to make a duplicate of, I need to build myself a mold box and then pour in my mold substance. I've seen people make mold boxes out of a number of different materials, wood, plastic, metal, so on. A really affordable option that I've seen is people using a sort of plastic corrugated board. So it's very similar to cardboard, but completely plastic. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a hold of some today, and I could just be patient and try this video later, but I don't feel like it. I want to do it now. So I ran around my house looking for something that might work, and this is what I've stumbled upon. A plain old normal three ring binder. Now the downside of this guy is that almost certainly it's going to be filled with a papery cardboard inside, which is not great. But you don't know until you try, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this guy up to be our mold. Right. Ignore this. Pretend that's not there. Oh, goodness. Oh my god, guys. This is going to be a major lesson in... For the love of God, do not do what I am doing. Just go ahead and buy, like, some mold making kits online. They are not expensive. I'm just impatient. Ugh. <sighs> okay. That was the worst, guys. Seriously, don't do that. So I'm just going to do some really bad scoring lines here. Da -da -da. Next up, I've got my handy dandy glue gun that I probably haven't touched in a year and a half. So let's see if it's still working. It's definitely not warm yet. All right, so while I'm waiting for my glue gun to heat up, let's start worrying about the pour spout for my pewter. The first pour of my silicone is definitely going to go with this being face up, which is good and fine and all. And I want to go ahead and make my pour spout this way. Now normally what you would do to create the uh, kind of distance between the... Because you want your piece to be in the middle of your mold. So in a perfect world, I would have some sulfur-free, uh, like, non-dry clay that I would put in the bottom here 
I'd put this on top and then I'd pour in my mold making compound. Unfortunately, kind of the theme of the episode today is I don't have that. So, so if you imagine here, if you imagine that I've completed my mold and that I now need to pour pewter into the cavity of the mold, I want to have a funnel to pour the pewter into. If possible, you want that to be a nice, like, good wide funnel to get as much metal in as you can to help fill out all the little fiddly bits. You know what, actually, now that I think about it, I, I am. I'm gonna have a, a mold where the funnel is flat on one side and then the rest of the funnel is created upward and that's just gonna be what it's gonna be. Not sorry about it. So my little box here needs to not have any spaces there because we're gonna fill that with mold making silicone later and I don't want silicone to ooze out the sides. Time for some glue gunning. So we're going to try and glue these sides in. It doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to be sealed. On it. Oh, nope, 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 still not done. Literally waiting for glue to dry or cool down in this place, case. Okay, we're starting to get someplace. It's still warm but at least it's not falling apart. So let's go ahead and give try number two. Ugh. Why? Get off me. I seriously forgot how awful hot glue is. It's kind of the worst. Okay. So this is very far from beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and do the inner corners as well. Okay. So we have an awful silicone mold box now. Guys, this is like super duper a lesson in how not to do this. Ugh, it's kind of ridiculous. Okay. So I'm going to do a big blob of glue on the bottom there. Put it approximately there. I'm doing it off-centered because I want to have lots of room for my eventual sprue. Here we go. I don't have very much of it, but I've got a little bit of clay that I'm going to go ahead and use to make my sprue. Kind of as per our discussion earlier, this is basically what a sprue looks like. So it's not pretty, but it's a sprue. So I'm gonna try and smooth. Oh God, don't move. Just stay where you are. So in case you're wondering about these two glue butt globs there, those are gonna become registration marks whenever we do the other half of the mold. All right, so now comes the super exciting mold part. So I have not made a mold with the uh, Mold Max 3, Mold Max 60, uh, but from what I understand, it's supposed to be good for high heat products like casting and pewter. So in theory, it's what I want. So let's take a look. It comes in quite a big container. Shake well before using. Apparently this is the compound. and then instructions. So let's take a quick look at that. Mix ratio, 100 parts of A, which I'm betting you, yep, is this big guy. 100 parts of A by three parts of B by weight. Wow. Pot life of 40 minutes, okay. So I have about 40 minutes of working time, which is plenty. Cure time is 24 hours, so that means that I won't be messing with my mold again for a whole nother day. Alright, so now comes one of the really exciting parts. We are going to bore our mold. No pull tab. Okay. Oh, okay. So here's what this looks like. 
So I have a couple different ways that I could easily measure this out. I'm going to start with 33 grams of the red stuff of part A to 1 gram of part B and see if that's enough or whether or not I'm going to need more to fill this little box. So we're going to see what 33 grams looks like in here. I'm giving this a, a quick little stir. So this is zeroed out with my cup all right. So let's just, I guess, start start making it happen. Whew! Wow! So we are already at 33 grams, and there's no way that that's enough. So let's go ahead, let's see, take a look at 66 grams. Yep, that's not enough. We're just going to go all the way to 100. Because I think 100 might be enough. 94, 95, oh, we're super close, 99. 100 grams, okay. So we are all done with our 100 parts of Mold Mac 60, part A. And we're gonna try adding those itty bitty three parts of 60. So I'm a little bit leery of my ability, this is very liquidy, to just pour in <laughs> only three grams of this. So I've got this little bitty pipette which I'm going to use to drop, 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 drop my three grams in with. Oh, shake well. Let me listen to the instructions. The in Ooh, oh god, oh god. It's very blue. Ugh. And it smells. Okay, let's pipe out some. Here we go. I've got my little pipette here full of blue, and I want to get this to 103. Okay. Oh no! Oh no! Oh god. It turned off. Okay, that's not good. Well, I did one pipette full. Oh, it's like not even registering this as... Oh, there we go. I finally got it to one. Oh, nope. It went back down to zero. What the hell? Oh god. Oh, that was terrible. Okay, never mind. It's like... It's kind of a waste of time to do the pipette thing. Oh god, and we've gone to four. Okay. Well, now it's back to three. I don't know. We are definitely more than enough. And I'm going to have to clean up all these little blue drops on my table. But first, let's go ahead and get this monster done. The instructions say to stir this vigorously for three minutes. So let's go ahead and get that going. Ooh. It looks kind of cool. Let me show you. It's got kind of a swirly texture. I don't know. This is interesting stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and get that stirred in. So here's my little mold. And I'm... Oh, whoops. A bit of the blue stuff got on there. Oh well. And I'm going to pour it into the corner here. Ooh, oh no. That was way too much in one lump. But, oh well. Because I know you're, you want to do it in kind of like one continuous, really thin pour. So that it pours around the rest of it without you introducing a bunch of air. Now, a lot of people will instruct you to use a vacuum to try and get out all of the bubbles in the mold. I don't have one, so we're just not going to do it. Okay, so we are about done. So there we go, my cup is empty. We're going to go ahead and let this sit. My beautiful mold here, I can't really show you. Uh, but we're going to let this hang out overnight and see what it looks like tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day, and this has had more than 24 hours to go ahead and dry out and become fully cured and hardened, hopefully. So I'm super excited to open this up and see what we got. Okay, come on, open up. Ah. Ooh. This might be where the experimental part of this is coming in, like maybe silicone and 3D prints don't play nicely, I don't know. Come on. 
maybe it is time for some tweezers. So let me go get some. So here's my crappy tweezers that I don't really care very much about. Okay, so all this, this what I'm pulling off right now, that is the hot glue that I used to secure my piece down to the cardboard originally. So that is what's being difficult here. It has nothing to do with the silicone. It's the uh, hot glue trying really hard to stick to the surface of the 3D print. So now what I have to do is decide whether or not I want to do a back piece like I kind of originally planned or just run straight into front. I admit I'm kind of tempted to be lazy. Well, adding a second piece is not going to improve how well it pours. So you know what? Let's go for it. Whew. All right. So here's what it looks like once it's been pulled out of my mold. Some things I can already see. That is a piece that probably should have stayed in my mold. So that is no longer going to cast as a hole on my my mold here since it's ripped out. I would recommend that if you were going to try doing something similar to this, you would definitely want to put your uh, mold line right in the middle of these loops instead of flush with the back end. It would have been better if I had done it in the middle of, of my pretty little loops here. Oh well, that's okay. This is just for funsies. So here's what my mold looks like when all is said and done. It's pretty cool. You can even see some of the little striation like print marks in the mold itself, which means that I bet you whenever we go ahead and cast this in pewter, we're probably going to also still be able to see those print mark striations, which isn't exactly a perk if you're trying to go for historical jewelry. Obviously, they wouldn't have had print marks. But that aside, it's just it's cool. <laughs> it's so neat. So next up, we're going to want to cast pewter into our big old sprue there, but I'm going to need a backing plate. I have a bunch of options that I could use. I will probably go for wood, since usually you want to go ahead and back this side of a mold with wood as well. You don't want this flexing at all as you're pouring. So I'm also going to clean up some of these uh, kind of raised edges so I have a nice flat surface to deal with. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, I am just simply too impatient to wait. I'm going to try and see if I can get this guy to cast at all with my current molten pewter. So I'm just going to use the back of one of my other molds. As I mentioned before, I really should have a, a whole nother hard piece here on the back to help prevent my thumb from uh, distorting the design, but hopefully we can get away with it anyway. Takes a second for it to cool down enough to harden. There we go, let's see what we've got. Oh, it filled in really well. Like there's a hole near the bottom there, but it is mostly filled in. Let's take a look. Oh, that is pretty cool. Now this is a far from perfect mold, considering I kind of messed up a few processes in making it. There's obviously a lot of texture here that uh, I wouldn't consider to be super desirable, but it's kind of the nature of the game when it comes to 3D printing. So I'm going to do a couple more casts and see what they all look like. Hmm. They're becoming more and more discolored over time. That's an interesting development. 
That was lots of fun, guys. And I now have the answer to my experiment, which is, yes, you totally can make a mold of a plastic 3D print and then cast pewter into that mold, which is really neat. It's got, it's got some good heft. Uh, it's amazing because the original plastic is just so light in comparison. So here in the light, you can see my little pewter results here. Obviously, as I mentioned before, a lot of texture on these guys. And that can be fine if that's what you're going for or if it doesn't hinder your project. I'm getting a lot of discoloration here from the pewter. I'm not sure if that's because I'm overheating it or what. I, I honestly don't remember why that, that happens. I'll have to go look it up. It's been a while since I've done pewter stuff. So, um, this is messy, but that is totally because I got lazy with my mold making. This was only for like funsies experimentation sake. Definitely some improvements that could be made if I were to do an actual project with this, but mostly it's just kind of really exciting to see that it can be done and to get a sense of what it would look like and what I would do to make it better next time. So hopefully that helps any of you that might be considering something similar. If you have any questions, do post them below and I will get back to you as quick as I can.